Okay, now the things just went super crazy and the more I play with the AI, the more I play with Deep Seek specifically, the more I want to integrate that thing onto my Prem network. Now in that episode, I asked Deep Seek if he can create a C2 framework just like that. And the response is quite amazing, to be honest. Now, I was not trying to invade its, its prompts. I was not trying to be ethical explaining that everything is going to be for educational purpose. I was like, new chat. And then directly, can you create a C2 framework using C Sharp and Python as a backend? That was it. And let's see how he thinks about that. Okay, so the user is asking if I can create a C2. Now, first, DeepSeek wanted to understand what is a C2 framework, and it, and it realized that it's a framework that is used in cybersecurity, often in red teams to manage compromised systems. Then he first needs to understand what the backend should look like, how they can communicate. In that case, he chose to communicate over HTTP using REST APIs and essentially did everything in just a 30 second. He decided to specify a CLI from the server side on the same console, so we're gonna see that just in a minute. Now, after its thinking process, then he tries to summarize what he's gonna do. Now, on the first part, he's gonna do a C Sharp agent, which is implant. That's exactly what I want. This is going to run on the targeted machine. It's going to connect to the Python server and execute command and send them back. Then we have the Python server, which is the C2 server itself, which is going to listen for agent connections. It's going to save agent ID and statuses. And it's going to send the agent and receive responses. Then, of course, we're going to use HTTP slash S for communication and TCP. And this is the code. That's the code, guys. Which worked but not for 100% and I'm going to mention what edits we did. Now I'm going to open my Kali VM which is going to be using for our uh, deep seek C2, I can say it like that now. I've just opened that in a sublime text, not in complex and just pasted it. From the code we can find that something needs to be tuned and that something is actually the last part which actually parses the agent, its command and assigns them to different agents. But now before doing that, let me just go through the code and explain how it works because to me that's just mind blowing. So I'm gonna go back to my Kali and there it is. We have a bunch of like uh, 68 lines of code which is edited, which I'm gonna explain later. But now let's just start. Now first we're gonna import all the libraries. Then we're gonna do a Flask application for the backend. And here we define all the agent objects. Now, obviously, he's not working with any form of database in the moment. So everything which is done by the C2 framework is going to be saved directly in the memory. That means that if you do control C, everything is lost, but that's just from one prompt. Maybe if we ask them to integrate database, he's going to do it. Maybe if we ask DeepSeek to pretty much perform encryption of any form, he's going to also do it. I'm going to test it more. Then we have several routes. These routes are essentially where the request of the data is going to come in. And we have different routes and different routes do different actions. For instance, we have the slash request, re register, sorry, which is going to actually register a new agent. So when you execute your C sharp implant, he's going to first register and then start issuing commands. That's crazy that he managed to figure it out just by one prompt. I did not ask for that specifically. He just figured it out. Then the next part is tasks. In that point, point slash tasks, whenever the agent wants to see if there's going to be a new task, he's going to reach out to this endpoint, and if there's any task, he's going to execute it. Now, after the agent executes the task, he's going to post them inside the slash results endpoint, which is going to also append and upload the task output. So when he executes a command, he's going to save the command's output and send it over this slash endpoint, uh, slash results endpoint. Now, these are all the functions. Essentially, it's clean and simple. We have the ability to register, share task, and get the results. That's all we need for now. Then, on the final part of the equation, we have the final function, which is the run server, which essentially starts the server. In that case, I needed to modify the host to be listening on all interfaces. The port is going to be 5000 just for debug purposes, and that's it. Then, then we have the main. Inside the main, we start a new thread, and we start an infinite while loop. In that infinite while loop, we define our command to be input from the keyboard, from the console, and then we pass that command, send it to the agent, and pretty much then observe for any kind of response. And that thing works. It needed super, super less modifications, which 
if you just do Google or ask other AI such as ChatGPT, you're gonna be completely fine. In that case, I wanted to automate the process for 100%, so I went to ChatGPT. So I went there, so my chat was disappeared, I don't know why, but essentially all because I'm walked out. But I went to ChatGPT and I was like, hey, this is my Python code, it doesn't pretty much parse the command properly, can you fix that? And ChatGPT came up with the exact code I paste, so no need to, I didn't touch anything by myself. That's 100% pure AI code. Now let me get back to the agent itself, so I'm gonna walk into my command VM. I wanna say thank you to all of my Patreon sponsors. You make me feel so appreciated and motivated to continue building content like that. If you, the one you're watching, also have further appreciation to my work, don't hesitate to become a patron where you're gonna be added to a lot of projects and internal discord groups so make sure to join see you there and moving on okay and after loading up the visual studio now we are at the implant project now on the implant project i literally pasted the code and added a bunch of debug statements for just console right line to check what's going on with the agent because it didn't work at the first time and I also needed to add a bunch of assemblies for example the DLL for .NET HTTP and so on but all the issues I faced were directly googled and resolved after I made my Google so for example as mentioned needed to add the DLL and pretty much that was it now from there I modified the IP address and modified the agent ID now in some more realistic scenario you won't want that to be randomized and so on but we are just on the POC stage here, right, we are just doing some exemplary code. Now let's go back to the agent and analyze how it works. We have a class called agent from where we define some global, global variables, in that case this is going to be the HTTP client which you're going to use for communication and our, as mentioned, C2 server and agent ID. On the main method that's where things actually start. From the main method we do simply two things, or actually three things. The first thing we do is we register the agent and that's crazy how this AI came up with this idea that you need to register the agents and you can have multiple agents running on the same C2 server, that's, that's just crazy. So first thing we do, we just register the agent and then we enter into again infinite while whoop. In that infinite while whoop, we run the, the function check for tasks and then sleep for 5 seconds. So that action is gonna be repeated each 5 seconds and then the agent is gonna see if there's any task and then execute them. Now the register agent function is there. What it does, it simply it creates a new agent object like that. And this agent object is sent over the HTTP JSON file and sent to the slash register endpoint, which is the one that accepts the registration on the backend. Now when that thing is done, now the Python knows that this agent is online and that we can now start issuing some commands. Now the next function is check for tasks. This function is extremely simple. We make a request to the slash tasks endpoint which was defined in the backend and here we parse our agent ID. From there we, define, we get the response and based, the, based on the response, if there's any here, we run execute command function. Now this function is in that case super simple, we just create a new process with simd.exe, we do slash c as a parameter and pass the command as an argument, so in that case each command which comes from the HTTP is going to be parsed and executed from there. This is a standard thing, this can be flagged of course, I'm not saying that's evasive, but it works. And then what happens, we have also one more function which is send results, in that case we again JSONify an object and send them over the slash results endpoint. Now with that, if you compile, I already did that but I'm gonna recompile it super fast, I'm gonna, come on, don't fail me now, okay nice, I'm gonna simply open a PowerShell window and move to that space and just simply execute it. Now before executing that, we obviously want to have a backend running, right? So in that case, I can go to my desktop and from there I can simply do python3c2.py. In that case, as mentioned, it's, it has some hard-coded variables. For example, it's gonna start to know interfaces on port 5000, but that's not important for now. What is important is that if I run deepseek it works. We register the agent and now we are seeking for tasks. And there it is, we have the post slash register, which resulted in 200, and now we seek for tasks. 
Now you may ask how we can work with that C2 framework. Well, I can just do enter. And there it is your C2 prompt, which is kind of buggy because after the next request come, the, this window is going to be broken, but that can be fixed super easily. But the essential part here is that if you do task, you can see first the, if you're doing valid task command, it's going to prompt you with how to use its C2 framework, how to use and task commands. In that case, it wants to see task, then the agent ID, and then the command. In that case, if we do task one and who am I, we have see, we can see task assigned to agent one and the command is who am I, and boom, in the next request, we see the response. We can try to issue any command here, for example, task one IP config, and we can see that the output is parsed successfully. We don't have some kind of a new line characters, a special characters or any mismatch between the information. It's parsed right off the bat, it's here and it works. Now the ability to create a C2 framework, it's not a C2 framework, it's a super simple and POC code. But the point is that it works and it took the AI about two minutes or maybe five minutes in order for me to compile, test and fix with another AI, which was the ChatGPT. So the code you see, which works, I came up with that code for just around maybe five, maximum 10 minutes, which to me is crazy because I experienced a bunch of issues. For example, I wanted to then modify the code to make it better, to make this more evasive, just saying, as I'm saying to you guys, the same thing to DeepSeek. But the point is, he's just always busy. The server is busy all the time. And I wonder what might happen if he was not busy and what kind of code I can came up with for maybe half an hour if I'm doing that with DeepSeek. So I'm seriously thinking about integrating that AI into my on-prem system locally. Now with that, I want to say massive thanks for sticking by. If you enjoy this content, make sure to hit the like button, smash the subscribe button, which helps my channel a lot. Thank you so much. And I just have no words on how to finish this, but be wary of the AI. See ya.